Today I'm going to be producing a very fine copper metal powder. To do this, I'm going to be reacting copper sulfate um, through two main methods. The copper sulfate that you see here was produced through a reaction of copper iodide and caro's acid. Caro's acid is essentially a super strong sulfuric acid, and you can see that it worked very well to produce some very well structured crystals, and they're of very high purity. Before we can do any reactions though, we'll need to dissolve some of these crystals into solution. So here I add a couple heaping spoonfuls into about 100 milliliters of water. I used a stir bar and light heating to speed up the process, but this was completely unnecessary. After everything is dissolved, we can take about half of our solution, or 50 milliliters, and pour it into a small dish. In this first reaction, we'll just be doing a simple redox using a very, very fine metal powder. In this instance, I'll just be using zinc metal powder, which is the same metal that I used in my producing nickel video. Really, any metal that's higher than copper on the electromotive series will work just fine, but I chose zinc because I had it readily available, and its sulfate is very soluble. From above, you can see that the copper is beginning to form a layer on top of the zinc. So, to break it up, I added a stir bar and let it spin for a couple minutes. It's very easy to tell when this reaction is complete because now there is little to no blue color left in the solution. It doesn't look very much like copper, and that's due to the large excess of zinc and how fine the copper powder is. When metal powders are super finely divided, they almost always look black. To remove the excess of zinc, though, I added about, I don't know, 200 milliliters of 5% vinegar. This will eat away the zinc, leaving uh, soluble zinc acetate salt and the insoluble copper. Copper metal is largely unreactive with um, most acids, especially acetic acid. I had to replenish the acetic acid multiple times, but eventually I was left with this much more red looking metal powder and this is indicative of copper. Even though the zinc metal is now gone, there are still impurities of zinc sulfate, zinc acetate, and acetic acid. So I have to wash the metal powder multiple times and allow it to settle after each washing. I did this about four times and I was fairly positive that most of the salts had been removed. After the salts are gone, the metal powder is still wet, so we need to dry it. I just heated it on my hot plate for about an hour and a half until it appeared mostly dry. I broke up clumps as they formed with a glass stir rod. Once the copper metal powder is dry, you can see that the volume is greatly reduced. We're left with a mostly free-flowing powder, and um, it can be broken up more if needed. The copper um, produced here is so fine that it will even burn um, when heated in front of a torch. Uh, it will also be very useful as a catalyst in um, reactions such as dehydrolyzation reactions in which um, alcohols are reduced to their ketones and produce hydrogen gas as a byproduct. I'm not seeing a green flame here because uh, for one the lights are on and for two the ionization temperature of copper is very high. Anyways, for the next method, I will be doing an electrochemical reduction of the copper sulfate. The byproducts of this reaction will be sulfuric acid and copper metal. The sulfuric acid could be collected, but I thought it was a waste of time personally. I'm using a platinum plated electrode as my anode and a steel spatula as my cathode. I would recommend using a fairly high amperage for this process because the higher the amperage is, the less crystal definition the copper metal deposits will have. The deposits will mostly be randomly organized and so it'll essentially just be a fine powder stacked on top of each other. You can see that there is a fair amount of copper built up on the spatula and since there's a very low adherence um, in this particular setting, uh, it should just wipe off and this copper metal powder can be collected and dried similarly as the first method was. I think this method 
is probably um, produces a more pure end product, but uh, it could be refined more, of course. It's also important to note that I used a power supply for this, but even a 12 volt or a 9 volt battery would work. Anyways, I was left with a lot of copper, and I used some of it to make my copper placeholder on my periodic um, table sample of elements. Anyways, thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed my video.